Have you been told you need to stop doing what you love, whether it's exercise, running, or a sport? Well, here at Dynamic, we don't like that answer. In this podcast, we'll talk to leaders in the health and wellness space from Southwest Florida to get the solutions you need to get you back to doing what you love. Welcome to the Dynamic Naples Podcast. Do you have any of the following symptoms? Feeling tired or weak, shortness of breath, feeling faint, a smooth red tongue, pale skin, chest pain, nausea, vomiting, loss of appetite, heartburn, numbness in the hands or feet, memory loss, blurred vision, or depression. These are just some of the symptoms of something called pernicious anemia. I wanted to bring this topic up because before I was a therapist, I certainly did not know what pernicious anemia was. I don't think there's a lot of awareness around this topic. And the diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia is all too common. And although you can't really diagnose much with just a list of symptoms, uh, you know, diagnosing something, types of anemia can be a little tricky. And if your practitioner isn't fully aware of all the types, Uh, You can get a wrong diagnosis and the wrong treatment and not get better, and in some cases even get worse. For example, with iron deficiency anemia, well, sorry, with iron supplementation with the inaccurate diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia, you could go into iron overload, which can be very detrimental to your your health. Uh, I mean, too much iron can literally rust your organs, and in some cases it can even be fatal. So having the correct diagnosis is extremely important. And while I'm on the top of iron, the least sensitive marker for iron in the body is iron. I went over this once in my iron uh, regulation or dysregulation podcast. Go back and check that one out if you want more details. But something like 1% of iron is actually in the serum. The serum is like circulating in the bloodstream. Uh, Iron is mostly stored in a molecule called ferritin. So ferritin is a much better marker for iron. And there's other ones as well, but that's probably... The most common one and a much more accurate one. So before we dive into pernicious anemia, let's talk about what anemia is. Anemia is a condition that reduces the ability of blood to carry oxygen. And that's what leads to the fatigue and you know, all those other symptoms as well. Uh, this may be due to a reduction in the hemoglobin. That's the thing that attaches to the, uh, the oxygen. Or a reduction of the production of red blood cells themselves. The most common causes of decreased red blood cell production is... B12 deficiency, folate deficiency, and, of course, iron deficiency. B12 is extremely important. It's a very important nutrient. It's involved in the methylation cycle. It's involved in genetic repair. Uh, B12 and folate together uh, do these things. It uh, keeps your body's blood and nerve cells healthy. And this is why, when you're deficient, you have this vast array of uh, symptoms. So you can be deficient in B12 for a number of reasons. It could be just dietary. So uh, let me start there. So B12 has to come from animal products. You can't get in plant foods. Plants don't need B12, so they don't store it. You may have heard of uh, some vegetables containing B12. It's not actually true. So B12 is actually called cobalamin. There's something called cobamides, which is a B12 or cobalamin analog that are in some plant foods. So it looks like B12, uh, so, but it doesn't act the same way in the body. What it does do is actually inhibit your absorption of B12. So, as I was saying, B12 has to come from animal products. It's highest in clam, uh, liver, lamb liver, beef liver, duck liver, oysters, pork liver, caviar, mackerel, herring, mussels, crabs, sardines, and salmon. A lot of seafood, too. So, deficiency in, uh, from the dietary perspective is common. But there's also a malabsorption issue that's is just as common. And some of the things that can inhibit the absorption of this vital nutrient are SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, because B12, uh, well, I'll get more into that in a bit, but it it, uh, combines with something called intrinsic factor, where it then goes into your ileum, what's the small intestine, where it's absorbed. SIBO can interfere with that, because that's the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, so instead of your body getting B12, the bacteria get it. An H. pylori uh, infection can cause this. Low stomach acid, that's another thing I did a podcast on. Uh, We tend to develop less stomach acid as we get older, so we don't uh, absorb our food as well. Celiac disease, uh, excessive alcohol use, 
Even use of metformin, the diabetes drug, can deplete the B12 stores. I'm curious to see what happens with these new ones like Ozempic, uh, some glutide, if that's going to have any effect on B12. Okay, I just paused the podcast because I had to know because I'm such a nerd. So I did a quick Google search. I did find at least one article that suggests an association of use of semaglutide and B12 uh, deficiency. Uh, I didn't go over the mechanism in there, but I kind of already know what it may be. So uh, I do know that these GLP-1 agonists inhibit or they slow down the uh, the transit times, in other words, how long it takes from food to go from your stomach to anus, basically, for excretion. And that's part of what gives it the uh, satiating effect. But when food sits in the small intestine longer, then you develop, well, you can develop SIBO because you're basically giving the bacteria there, who are opportunistic, chance to feed on that food. So that's probably the likely correlation. Again, this is, that is purely uh, theoretical. So those are some of the risk factors for B12 deficiency. Now, let's get into pernicious anemia. So pernicious anemia, what is it? So the word pernicious means deadly, because this used to be a deadly diagnosis. But don't worry, that that term came up way before we we knew what to do. Now we have some answers. So I mentioned intrinsic factor earlier. So the inner lining of your stomach has these cells called parietal cells. They excrete uh, acid and that intrinsic fast factor, so they're there to help digest things. The intrinsic factor is a glycoprotein that attaches to B12. From there, that's where it moves into the small intestine. Then it gets absorbed. So intrinsic factor is necessary to help the absorption rate of B12. Well, pernicious anemia is a type of autoimmune condition that attacks those cells, the parietal cells, that make the intrinsic factor. There does seem to be a bit of a genetic component to it. Uh, you know, like all autoimmune disease, it's usually genetics load the gun, environment pulls the trigger. So you, there's something like, uh, I think it was 19% of people with, no, those with pernicious anemia had a 19% chance of having a, a relative that also had it. But that's just how autoimmunity works. You basically, your body can only ha- handle so much allostatic load. If you have a lot of stress in your life, some poor diet choices, maybe some foods that irritate your gut, exposure to toxins such as molds, uh, and then you have a uh, certain genetic SNP, they're called, it can basically turn that on. That's basically how autoimmunity develops for the most part. And the genetic predisposition that you have determines the type of autoimmune disease that you may develop. This is why autoimmune disease tends to develop later in life because of the cumulative effect of exposures you have to your environment does that turn on a gene so that's pernicious anemia in a nutshell so what do we do how do we test for this so usually blood work is a good screening tool again screening tool can't really diagnose it just from blood work alone Those, these are proxy markers but what you'd expect is likely a b12 deficiency not and that is a rule by the way because you can have a high intake of B12 in your diet, but if your body is not absorbing, it can just be floating around in the serum, and so you can have sort of a false positive, uh, or sorry, a false negative because you have high B12. So it's not a rule that you have to be B12 deficient, but there's some other clues in blood work. So you, B12 tends to, uh, well, it works with homocysteine in the methylation cycle, so if your homocysteine is elevated, elevated that could be an indicator of... Uh, B12 deficiency, but that's not specific to B12 because homocysteine also combines with folate, so it could indicate uh, a folate deficiency. And this is where you have to have other clues, such as MMA. MMA would be higher, methylmalonic acid would be elevated. Some of your red blood cell indices should be uh, altered, lowered for the most part. Hemoglobin, red blood cell count, MCV would be elevated, MCHC elevated. I know this is getting into the weeds a bit, so. Just know that if some of your red blood cell counts are off and your B12 and homocysteine is off, you probably need to do some more digging. Uh, there is uh, an antibody to intrinsic factor. There's a test for that. There's also something called a Schilling's test. This can also help tease it out. There is also uh, questionnaires online, uh, pernicious anemia surveys that you can fill out. There, there's a pernicious anemia society that has a website with a questionnaire, you can check that out. But again, this is important to know. It's important to know if you have anemia, what type of anemia it is, 
because if you do the wrong thing, it, it could be harmful to your health. If you do have pernicious anemia, uh, then you will probably have to supplement with B12 for the rest of your life. That's okay. Something, no harm in that. Uh, but there are multiple reasons for B12 deficiency, as I've gone over here. So determining what is doing that first is probably the most vital thing. So if you want help with this, give us a call. We've added functional medicine to our practice. This is what we do now with, and on top of physical therapy. We are all about getting to the root cause of pathology, disease, and, and improving human health. And if you haven't already yet, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is where I post my podcast. It comes out here first before I put it out everywhere else. Uh, hit the bell icon so that when I do post something new, you get that notification. Because I try to bring the best content I possibly can to you, all the cutting-edge material. And if you like this content and you want more stuff like this and you have questions, please email us. Hit us up. Let us know what you want me to talk about. I can talk for days. <laughs> And I love to talk, as you probably have noticed. So email us, contact us, and that's all I have for you this week. I'll be talking to you guys soon. Why guess when you can test? Do you get hangry or crash after a carb-heavy meal? These could be indicators that there is a dysfunction in your blood glucose regulation. If left unchecked, it can lead to irreversible changes. If you catch it quick enough, you can make diet and lifestyle changes that will get your levels where they need to be. 88% of Americans are pre-diabetic and don't know it. Diabetes underpins many of the pathologies we deal with in this country, such as obesity, high blood pressure, heart disease, and stroke. For some reason, it is rarely screened with your physician, and if they do test for blood glucose, it's usually with an A1C or a fasting glucose, which can sometimes give you a false negative. Nutrisense is a company that supplies continuous glucose monitors. We've paired with NutriSense to get you real-time data to see how your physiology responds to glucose. The NutriSense app lets you track your daily activity to see how food, sleep, exercise, and stress impact your glucose. You can log or import this data into the NutriSense app to see the effect on your blood glucose levels as soon as it happens. Use the code DRCHRIS25 for $25 off your order today. Do you have unexplained pain or do you wonder just how healthy you are? When was the last time you had your blood tested? Blood chemistry analysis is a great tool to stay ahead of any health conditions, and now you can have control of your health with Let's Get Checked. Let's Get Checked is an incredible company that sends blood tests to your home. You can choose from over 30 different tests, whether that's thyroid function, testosterone, micronutrient, cholesterol, or C-reactive protein, which is a marker for inflammation. It is sent to you with free shipping, and you get results in two to five days. No physician referral needed. Use the code DPT25 for 25% off. You can find links in the show notes. Did you know that you can get started with physical therapy without a physician's referral? Physical therapists don't just solve pain. We get down to the root cause and keep it from coming back. We also discuss all things health, such as nutrition and lifestyle changes. If you feel that you could use some help, let's get on a free consult call. Go to www.dynamicnaples.com and sign up for a free call. Also, if you like this podcast, please give us a rating wherever you listen to podcasts. It helps us spread the message. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.